Welcome along to this lesson on hand position, where we're going to learn how best to position your picking hand so you build the proper technique, so no matter what finger picking pattern comes up, that you're going to feel solid as you're learning it. And we're also going to go into a few general best practices to watch out for, as always. When it comes to finger picking, I'm going to focus mainly on our hand that is going to do the picking, because I'm going to assume that you've done work on your open cards or even bar cards if that's what you want to apply finger picking to. Which means the good news is that we only have like 50% of our playing so to keep an eye on, which is our picking. At times in this lesson, I'm going to swap the shape I'm using. And as I've said before, if you want to follow along with your own shapes or copy the ones I'm doing, these best practices work on every card shape. So I get my G and I'm going to pick it first of all. That's how we get it. On the surface, it looks like I'm just picking. The first thing I'm gonna bring your attention to is what I'm doing with my pinky. Note the way I have it rested on the bottom of the guitar. That basically helps me anchor my hand, so I'm gonna stay in position no matter what finger picking pattern comes up. So if I do a pattern like this, it's steady. If I do this, it's steady. See my pinky way it's on. That's number one. So if you want to get your pinky and place it there, and where best to place it, looking at it, I like to think of it as placing it on the outside of that circle. So I'm just in the outskirts of my sound hole here. So that'll be step one. And you'll notice my forearm is rested into the body. It isn't like hovering up off it that way. So it rested in, pinky down. And keep an eye on it. Sometimes it can kind of like just surprisingly get up off the guitar without even realizing. <laughs> so keep checking in it. The next thing I like to draw your attention to is our thumb. With our thumb, our thumb is going to hit the bass notes most of the time. A classic common error that players have is this. Notice the way my thumb has now gone crooked. It's like hooked. And we want to keep it nice and straight. And looking at my thumb here, there can actually be a bend back the way on it as well. So it isn't fully like that, because we want a bit of tension. So it's like it's going to bend just a little up the way. We'll bring that back. You see it there in effect. The reason for that is, after your thumb picks it, it goes back up to the top. And that is your first picking exercise. You're just gonna get your pinky, get your thumb, and practice on a G chord or another chord if you wish, picking it and returning it up to the top, like that. Now, remember, as with our strumming, we don't need to like get our thumb to be super hard. It's like a one inch punch. It's like that little movement can pack so much punch and sound. So pinky on and the thumb just goes like that. And the way the thumb lands on the string it's like using our pick, our thumb lands and then picks. Land and pick. Land, and it's like you roll off the string. Watch out that you don't just in the one movement let the thumb fall and it catches the string as it falls. You want it to land and roll off the string gently. So that's your first exercise. Keep in mind we're building the basics. I know right now you might be going, this isn't finger picking. <laughs> and it's not, not yet. It's the start of it though. So we got that. What do we do with the other three fingers? Well, I wonder if you noticed that as I used my thumb, these three fingers, they were like 
kept in this formation. They were kept side by side and they were hooked. Note the way that the fingers are hooked back that way. So if there was like an overall hand picking symbol, it would be something like this. Thumbs out straight, the pinky's anchored, and those three are put together. They're not like this. You know you're doing it right when you look at these knuckles here. They'll be like bent, not flat. They'll keep them bent. And when it comes to finger picking, there's a special extra piece added on to always help you know what fingers to pick the strings with. It's Pima, P-I-M-A. P is for your thumb, and it's taken from Spanish words. I am not gonna butcher the Spanish language by trying to pronounce them here, but I am gonna share with you that it's P for thumb, I for index, M for middle, and A for your ring finger. And interestingly enough, there's no letter given for the pinky, which again kind of puts it in the category of like, use it as an anchor. It works pretty well. So you've P, I, M, A. So what that would begin to do is, as you get more comfy reading that, no matter what note you see written in tab, just have a check in to see what finger is being suggested for the pattern. So that's our pinky, our thumb, how to read it. And now we've talked briefly about these three. I wanna go a bit more in depth on how to set solid technique for that. Taking a look at our strings here, you'll notice that I do have an underbend on my fingers. So I'm picking here, I pick here, and I pick here. Note how after I'm finished picking that the fingers will wait curled. They do not do this. That is one of the most common things I see beginners do when they begin picking that. They pick and the fingers relax because it's not as natural for us to keep them arched like that. So a picking exercise to settle your three fingers will be as follows. To go thumb, index, middle, ring. Thumb, index, middle, ring. And just keep being sure that the thumb returns to the top in anticipation. Note the way it goes back up. When I've picked this note, the thumb has gone back up here. It's ready again. And each finger then is curled back up into its home. That picking exercise is gonna help you so much for your finger picking in the beginning because it's gonna be steady with the pinky, the thumb will be rolling off nicely and these will be returning back to where they belong every time they're after picking. Do not underestimate how powerful that simple little picking exercise can be. Practice wise, I'd encourage you to take that and spend a couple of minutes every day for the next couple of days on that. And that's on your G chord. That same picking pattern can be used on your E minor chord, your E chord, a bar chord F, basically any chord that has an E string as a root note. And of course, as always, that'll be included below this video. And then what about the A chord, A minor, C? All we're doing is we're gonna move our thumb down a string. So on my C chord here, my thumb is now on the A string and I do the exact same thing, exact same practices work. Same with A minor, A major. And keep an eye that you don't say the classic phrase, this picking thing is tricky, it doesn't work that way for me, but I'm getting a sound doing it this other way. There are like so many different ways that you can finger pick with, and that you'll get results with in the beginning, However, as time goes on and you find a faster song, that technique won't work and you'll have to go back and like rewire the whole lot again. So I encourage you to stick with it. And you know, reach out at any time with questions. I'll be happy to answer. So that's a whole host of chords covered now that you can do that standard picking pattern with. 
And again, as you practice it, stick on one chord, get comfy with that, like a bit of time on your G, and keep checking in that the technique is in check. And then when you feel comfy with it, just swap chord, maybe stay on the same type of chord. So you're hitting the same strings. And then you could swap to the ones that happen on the A string, like C, A minor. And finally D, you just move your thumb down to the D string and pick that. Same with D minor. And as always then, you can make it more complex as time goes on. Like have more cards in your card sequence, have less time between card changes. You know, you can tweak it yourself as you go along, but this is the habit to build in the beginning. And finally, before we wrap it up, tone. Spend a bit of time just on one chord and just focus on how it sounds. You know, there can be such things as doing it too gentle like this. You want to get a very small amount of your fingers underneath the string so it rolls off it. Not just like the real tip of the finger. And you notice it has a fuller tone when you do that. And finally, watch out that you don't snap the strings like this. You'll know you're going too hard if you hear that. And that just about wraps up this intro to finger picking. So as always, your action items are written below. Take it slow and steady, and you build a solid foundation that you can carry into the more complex finger picking patterns. All right, so have fun practicing that, and click continue whenever you're ready to move on.